Greetings, my name is Robert and I'm the owner of Merit Systems International, developer of the Merit Web Project. You're watching video number one in the Therapist Builder video series. The Therapist Builder series provides expert education for therapists of all levels. All TVS videos are available on the Council Master YouTube channel. And today is um, the 22nd of August 2020. And uh, today, uh, first of all, let's take a look at this legal notice uh, just very quickly. I'll let you stop the video if you want, and I would encourage you to read through this very quickly. Um, but the following is educational material, and it contains suggestions, opinions, ideas, and concepts that may or may not be useful and helpful to the user. The user must do their own research and use discretion regarding the implementation and use of any opinions, ideas, and concepts contained in this training aid. Basically, this um, this material that we present throughout this entire series should be used by professionals who decide if it's useful or not and employ it if they believe that it is. Throughout this series we're going to do a broad range of things from expert training regarding psychological issues especially related to using the software as a counseling aid, education for therapists who counsel others not necessarily using the Merit Web Project software as the basis for those discussions, detailed discussion about specific psychological issues, specific Merit Web feature demonstrations, and maybe some philosophical um, discussions. Today we're going to start with the Merit Web Assessments. This is just a real brief overview. Um, on the following pages we will explore Merit Web Project Assessment Package. There are recommendations on those pages for the order in which assessments should be given and how often employing these recommendations will give you the greatest amount of information as well as the most accurate insights into your client's situation. Let me say that assessing your client on a regular basis with certain tools may cut weeks off of your counseling and cut tons of grief off of your client. Um, rather than going down a direction that you wouldn't have to have gone if you didn't test, um, we can stop that before it happens in many cases. Assessing is gaining information that you may not have had without assessing. There's three ways to give an assessment, and for those of you who have been doing this for a while, this is old news to you, but you can do an on-screen administration with the person basically in your office using your computer. Paper entry form, re-entry form, little boxes and you put numbers corresponding to their choices in that box it makes it really easy so you don't have to go through the test and select what they selected. And then remote assessment, that's when you send out an email and uh, when, when you click on remote assessment option it sends out an email to the client. The client then clicks on a link and it goes directly to uh, that assessment, they may not see their results, they come directly to you and they can't enter the system uh, once they complete the assessment. Down here uh, it says uh, how does remote assessment work. If you're using this for the first time, click on that and it will show you. First assessments to administer at or before the first session and again using remote um, testing, you can actually send these out prior to meeting the client for the first time. It is essential that you do a quick test at the first session or before the first session. It gives you anxiety, depression, and self-harm 
we call it personal safety. Uh, it's essential that you have this information right up front. Cognitive behavioral assessment, again, this is a, prim, a premium tool. If you're not a premium member, you need to be. This is uh, an analysis of 13 potential distorted thinking patterns. And these will actually cause the anxiety, depression, and potential self-harm. So this, the, the, the distorted thinking is essentially the foundation of um, the reaction, which is anxiety, depression, and self-harm. That's why you need to know what's going on cognitively. Um, when we distort our thinking, it causes an internal crisis. Um, after quick test has been administered four times or more, in the uh, premium section, you get expanded results that uh, show you the direction that the client is headed, how long it's going to take, potentially, um, all kinds of information that is extremely useful. We'll get to that in a future video. Second line of uh, assessments would be the behavioral assessments and the foundational assessment. Um, anger diagnostics shows how a person is releasing their uh, pent-up um, anxiety, depression. How, how are they uh, relating to their outside world as far as anger? It's usually related to the anxiety and depression and needing to get rid of it, to vent it. And then in addictions and dependency, how are they trying to bury it? Some people want to get rid of it with anger. Some want to just bury it. Uh, drugs and alcohol would be a good way to do that. Um, and then uh, you may have people who do well with anger and bury it with substance. The home of origin is the foundation, as far as I'm concerned, of the entire personality. You need this information. Uh, and we'll do at least one video, maybe more, uh, in this series on the home of origins. You're going to see later on that it, it is the, the capstone of what we do. Third assessments, not to diminish them. Um, they are extraordinarily important, but it's important to get them right. Um, it's possible if a person comes in with quick test scores that are elevated above 120 that they're going to be hypersensitive to the questions on the PSA, which means you're going to get skyrocketed uh, results on all the scales and that's just not going to do you any good. So I recommend within four weeks giving PSA, it should give you some um, better results, especially if anxiety and depression have dropped to 115. If, if they're at 115, you're good to give PSA. If they haven't dropped that far in four weeks, then go ahead and give it anyway. Schizotypy is a new feature as of August to, uh, 2020, and um, that analysis comes directly out of the items on PSA, so you don't need to give that tool. It's it's a tag along. It comes right along with PSA analysis. In fact, it's in the results and it has its own um, more detailed set of results. So there's a summary in PSA and an actual longer version of results. You should re-administer, I forgot to tell you this, quick test every week. CBT every week. It's only 50 questions. Um, it doesn't take that long. If you really can't do that, then CBT one week and quick test the next week, CBT the next week, quick test the next week. You, it's unethical for you to continue to use quick test results that are a month, or two months, or three months old. If you don't expect any change, something's wrong. You need to know what has changed, how much has changed, and those graphs that show you um, the progress of that change and the variance of that change. 
The same thing with PSA. If you're making an impact on this person, their personality structure is going to change to some degree. So you need to reassess with PSA uh, every four weeks, I would say. If you think there's been major changes, do it more often. I know it's 142 questions, but it's going to save you time and client grief. Uh, the remainder of the assessments are on you. Um, do what you want when you want with it. Final notes. Um, a lot of people will counsel until anxiety and depression are down and think they're, they're done. Actually, when anxiety and depression are below 115, now it's time to take PSA, the personality spectrum analysis, and really get down to, to the deeper work um, and, and get down to the personality issues that are causing them some disruption in their life. So that's all for now. Uh, on assessments, we will be going over individual assessments at some time in the near future. Thanks for watching.